League is the Germany under-20 side against the Portugal under-20 side, a meeting of two heavyweight nations at under-20 level. They'll be out on the pitch here in Zwickau in just a minute and kicking off in just under 10 minutes' time. Join us for kickoff on the hour for this elite league match between Germany under-20s and Portugal under-20s.
ready to go here in uh, Zwickau. So Portugal gets things started in Zwickau for today's under-20 match. It's elite league action for Germany as this year group sign off for 2022 and sign off for their under-20 international experience. It's been a good year for Germany under-20s, but here come Portugal immediately down the right-hand side. I look to get that one into the middle and it's cleared away from the penalty spot. Portugal come again over to the left-hand side. It's knocked back into the middle. Portugal will recycle it and they'll go all the way back. But it's Hannes Wolf's Germany side who sit top of the elite league at the moment. Portugal haven't fared so well. They're looking to make a bright start inside the first minute. Plenty of intention to get forward down that right-hand side from Portugal and they've won the ball back in a promising position there as well. But Germany could counter now out towards the touchline. They've got options forward as well. They'll play it into the middle and spread it across. It's nicely done too, and that's a tackle well won. Keeper's got to come out and get that one. Diogo Pinto swept up at the edge of his area. He had to be alert to it as well. And once the tackle was made, he looked for a split second as though the ball would just fall nicely for the Germany under-20 internationals who are pushing forward. It's Jamie Lawrence there with the number five shirt, just spreading the ball across the defence. It's now a null in goal today, replacing Jonas Urbig, who played in the win 2-1 against Norway just the other day. It's been a happy November so far. Zweimal in Zwickau, it says at the back there. Twice in Zwickau, and this is game number two of the two to be played at the GGZ Arena before the end of the 2022 international fixture list for the under-20s. So far, a slightly disappointing 2-2 draw against the Czech Republic last week. And then Germany bouncing back with an important win against Norway. But they fell behind in that game as well. They'll be looking to avoid a similar fate here. They recovered very well from going 1-0 down, it has to be said. Fisnik Aslani, the young Hoffenheim striker with a brace to give Germany under-20s the win. This is a tournament they've won before. They're well positioned to end this year at the top of the Elite League. It's had a rather checkered past in the last couple of years, the Elite League. It's been very, very difficult to get the fixture list completed. With good reason, of course. We all know why the fixtures were difficult to complete. But it is tough anyway in the under-20 calendar to try and fit all these games in. Germany winning the inaugural Elite League back in 2018. And as it stands right now, they sit top of the current table. Ten points from their four games. One, three, drawn one. And yet to lose under Hannes Wolf in the Elite League. It's a great competition. Pitting eight big names against each other at under-20 level. Replaced the outgoing Four Nations tournament a few years ago. And it's been a big success. As I say, difficult to get it finished in recent years given COVID. But Germany won the first one back in 2018. But this time... They're looking good, and Portugal are all the way down at the bottom at the moment. It's a big disparity in the amount of games played, it should be said, as Portugal knock it about the defence inside their own penalty area. They'll look to build something from the back. Space over on the left-hand side. It's with the captain, Renato Viega. Viega goes across the back, and Portugal spread it to the right, and they do so well. They're into Germany's territory now. They've kept control of that despite a high ball. It's a nice little bit of passing. Referee found himself in an unfortunate position. That didn't help Portugal. And Germany come away. They've got three players in the Portugal half, but that one straight to Vega. Portugal captain again, well positioned. Portugal coach watching on. Not even five minutes played yet. 
unsurprisingly it's been fairly even but again Portugal looking to exploit some space on the right hand side and again they get the ball into the box but eventually it's cleared away Germany have done well to win the second ball as well and that's a lovely touch could be chance to break on the left hand side surely that's going to come back for a Germany free kick and with exactly five minutes played the German under 20s do pick up the free kick spread out towards Marco Jon and back into the middle with Breithaupt Noll with a calm pass away I mentioned that he replaced the goalkeeper from the last game Jonas Urbig Janka lone keeper had made his debut but Noll's back between the sticks and here come Germany with their first attacking foray forward big chance to shoot from the right hand side of the penalty area there was a slip just as the shot was taken from Yamil Sibet referee had blown up anyway was there an offside flag up there perhaps Marco Jorn is down there it looks like Germany are getting ready for a corner the Portuguese defence are certainly preparing themselves did it take a touch off the fingertips of goalkeeper Diogo Pinto on the way through very, very hard to tell from that angle. In the end, Germany do indeed have the corner ball. Six white shirts in the middle. It only finds the defender at the front post, though. It's Gustavo Mendonca gets it away. And Portugal could break. They've gone for the quick pass into Germany's territory. Keeper Noll called into action quickly, but he was there where he needed to be. Germany have it on the left-hand side. As somehow... Ben Bobsian runs into a wall of four Portugal defenders and comes through the other side with the ball. But there's nothing at that very moment that Hannes Wolf's Germany under-20s can do with it. Six and a half minutes gone, just about seven actually. And it's still goalless in Zwickau for now. Game starting off nicely though, both teams showing their intent to get forward. Nobody's playing for the draw here today. Germany want the win to sign off in style for the end of this year group at 2022 and they've got it over onto the right hand side with Marvin Obutz he goes back to Marco Jorn who's been busy already Obutz cuts back onto his left and goes backwards now it's all the way back towards the halfway line Lawrence under a bit of pressure but does well to get it forward it's chipped through into the middle that's a good one a teasing ball but Giorgio Pinto comes out to grab it Rather easier than the save he made at his near post just a minute ago. If indeed it was a Germany corner, as was awarded. And it must have been a really good save with the fingertips of Diogo Pinto. Some calm passing inside their own territory from Germany at the moment who've settled well after Portugal came out of the blocks just about the quicker of the two teams it's all the way back with Noll 19 year old Hoffenheim goalkeeper Germany look for options on the left-hand side. They're tightly up against the touchline, but they've kept it in play. You can see the snow building up on the edge of the pitch. The ground staff have done very, very well to get this playable again tonight. Two games in quick succession here. Germany had success against Norway. Can they repeat that again tonight against Portugal? Previous results don't mean too much at under-20 level. Obviously, the year group's changing quickly as a shot comes in. From around about 25 yards out it was cleanly struck enough but it was never on target and Giorgio Pinto knew that as soon as it left the boot of Paul Nebel the captain tonight another look at that shot with the right foot from Nebel let fly from distance caught it alright but couldn't steer it on target the former Mainz youth 
He's on loan at Karlsruhe at the moment. 17 appearances in the second division of German football for tonight's captain, Nebel. He's got a great record for the Germany under-20s. 10 appearances, three goals as well. Been on the score sheet in the second division with the senior Karlsruhe team as well. Developing ever so well for a player of his age, Paul Nebel. And that is why he's wearing the captain's armband. He's been put in a position of trust by coach Hannes Wolf. And he has repaid the team in recent months. Portugal now. It's their turn to pass it around the defence. Veiga launches it forward and that's a really good ball to Rodrigo Gomes. Gomes looks to go through the legs but has to go back down the line instead to Guilherme Montoya. Back with the captain Veiga and I'm sure we'll see a lot of him tonight. Good feel for his positioning. Bringing out to Veiga. Again, anyone wearing the captain's armband at this level. It's a real sign that these players stand out. Mature head. Good head for the game. Vega is no different. Despite Portugal's struggles this year in the Elite League, it's not gone according to plan. They lost 3-1 to Poland and 2-1 to Italy. Neither of them on their own. A particularly outstandingly bad result, but put the two of them together and Portugal don't have any points yet. But here they come. Chance down the middle. Options over on the right-hand side of the penalty area. Will they use it? Germany try and crowd out the space in the box, but Portugal are still going here. Eventually, Germany get it away in the back heel. Puts it out for a Portugal throw. Will Germany be more comfortable with these snowy conditions? Very close to zero in Zwickau tonight. Portugal have it with Montoya. Cuts inside and spreads it across. Back across the defence to Gilberto Batista. Müller looks back. Portugal go again with captain Veiga. Tario Esugo. Portugal still looking comfortable on the ball. Neither team afraid to play their football. There's one to chase in the penalty area. It's going to be beaten by the byline, I thought. Didn't look as though Portugal would be able to keep that in and keep the danger alive in the penalty area, but as it was, there was a little test in there for Nahuel Noll. Germany have picked up a free kick. Just on the edge of the centre circle in their own half anyway. That was well done, though. I think it was Gomez who beat the path of the ball. I thought the speed of the ball would beat him. But Gomez kept it in extended the danger for Germany but it didn't come to anything in the end for Bino and his Portugal under 20 team that's a long searching ball across from right to left smart play from Germany leaving that to one another chance to cross in out for a corner Germany again, amassing players on the edge of the box here. Five of them in a bit of a train near the penalty spot. A couple more in the six-yard box, but it's headed away. It was aimed towards Lawrence, using his height advantage at the back post, but Portugal defenders have done very, very well there. And Guilherme Montoya actually picked up a throw-in for Portugal. Germany trying to win it back on the right-hand side. It's a heavy challenge from Paul Nebel. Clean challenge as well, but it ended up as a Portugal throw-in. Germany trying to make it difficult for Portugal to get out, and the ball bounces down into the technical area and away over the top of the dugout. Ball boy gets a new one quickly for Marco Jorn. The third player 
gets things restarted. There's not much room to pass around in there, though. Germany going for some quick, short passes, but Portugal have it away, and Germany win it back near the halfway line. With a quarter of an hour gone. It's Germany under 20s, nil. Portugal under 20s, nil. The best goal chance fell to Marco Jorn on the right-hand side. Went for an angled shot about five minutes ago, but it was over the top via the help. A very small fingertip save from Diogo Pinto, the Portugal goalkeeper. Nobody with a real gilt-edged chance yet. Gomez has gone down in some pain. There was a big scream from Rodrigo Gomez. Referee goes over to check if he's all right. There's another look at it. Paul Nebel tries to help him back to his feet. Gomez not interested for now, but it looks like he'll be OK to carry on for Portugal. Germany throw with Marvin Orbutz, the Holstein Kiel player. Rather sportingly goes back towards the Portugal captain. Germany go through the middle. Portugal defence with plenty to do there, but they do manage to do it. Keeper Pinto launches it long, but not that long. It's still in the Portugal half, and Germany have it back. A little bit of head tennis in the middle. That's good footwork over on the left-hand side from Ben Bobjian. He picks up a free kick, a throw-in rather, over on the left-hand side. Germany with a chance perhaps to launch this into the box. They've got a bit of height advantage in there as well, especially with Vishnik Aslani. Hoffenheim player with a brace in the last game. He moves short and in the end Germany keep it down in the corner rather than going route one straight into the box. And it didn't work out that time. Goal kick for Diogo Pinto. taking his time Pinto to get this one restarted but he will eventually use his right foot to launch this one forward no short passes inside the penalty area like we see in a lot of senior football these days instead I don't want to say old-fashioned because it's what happened for many many years it's only in the last 18 months or so that it's really gone out of fashion since the rule changes and Pinto aims to launch it long and Germany could be in here but first big chance Offside flag was up. The finish was a cultured one nonetheless. Germany not too happy about the offside flag going up. It was a lovely touch from Aslani. You can see he's a goal scorer. Full of confidence. He was just half a yard off. There wasn't too much in it, but it was a good spot by the linesman. Keeper Pinto will say that he heard the whistle and wasn't carrying on, but Aslani buried that right in the corner with a lovely little dink finish. It won't count, though. Still Germany under 20, nil. Portugal under 20, nil. Germany again winning it back in Portugal's half. The home team here in Zwickau starting to establish the upper hand just a little. But Portugal still, of course, possessing plenty of dangers as Rodrigo Gomez cuts it across. It's over to the right, thanks to Müller. Portugal have it with Travassos on the right. Miscontrol from the German defence, but... No pressure on it, and they'll be able to get it away. Pass across the middle is not the best one either, but yet again, another little lucky bounce. Didn't quite fall to Portugal in the final third there. They could have won the ball back in a very opportune position. Instead, they have it in the centre circle. There you go. It's out on the left. Montoya, Carvalho. Carvalho plays it forward into the box. That might be a Portugal corner. Siebert 
The Victoria Köln player clears up the danger and it's just a throw in instead but Portugal still have it down in the left hand corner not quite a set piece corner but almost just as good and they go back across into their own centre circle side and now they've gone out to the right easy for Noll simple gather for the young goalkeeper no pressure on Nahuel Noll there Portugal just trying to alleviate some of the pressure now as Germany just starting to turn it on in this game. Still pretty even overall, but Germany are the team who are beginning to look like the home team in Zwickau. Just having a little bit more of the ball. They seem to be able to hold on to it for longer. They've got more options just like this one when they look forward. Shooting chance, that's a clever pass instead. It took a very good challenge. Referee saw it and pointed to it straight away. Ben Bobsey and was in on the left-hand side there. He needed a last-ditch tackle. And it really got one from Gilberto Bastista. He got his reward as well with the bounce back of Bobsey. And clever pass from Aslani. Looked like he was in position to shoot, but he caught the defence out. Well, we thought he'd caught the defence out anyway. And a very nice pass in towards the run of Germany's number 17, Ben Bobzian. Batista coming up with the first really important defensive intervention of the day halfway through this first half. Portugal have it back near their own byline and they'll have to pass it to the right-hand side. Little Nutmeg might get them under pressure here, though, because they've given it away and Germany have it back on the left. Could be a corner or something better. Germany win it back by the byline. They've fallen on it. The referee saw it straight away, though, and he was happy. But even though Tim Breithaupt put his hands on the ball, the Karlsruhe man had been chopped down and it would be and will be a Germany under-20 free kick. It's not the easiest place to make something of it from here, but it's definitely one to get the Portugal defence thinking. By the looks of the players in the box, Germany treating this almost like a corner kick. They've got Nebel over it. It will be Nebel. Chalhaloglu thought about something, but they'll use Nebel instead. And he goes direct in for the top corner, and it needed a stunning save. The danger still not averted yet for Portugal. Now they get it away. It's booted upfield on the half volley with the left foot. But that was a brilliant attempt from the angle over on the left-hand side of the penalty area. Here's a look at the free kick again. Right-footed curler in towards the top corner, and the keeper did brilliantly to parry it. But then he was lost way away from the goal. Had to fly across to his right-hand side to keep it out initially. Found himself coming back onto his feet a couple of metres away from his far post. Somehow, Portugal hang on and Germany again. Just to make it clear that they have now established the upper hand. They've come as close as anybody in this game. That was a big, big chance. Here come Portugal, though. Ball across the middle. That was their best chance of the day. Decent response. Gustavo Mendonca in the middle. It bobbled up for him and he flung it over the bar. But there were plenty of red shirts waiting for that pullback from Rodrigo Gomez. Germany go long down the left-hand side up towards the halfway line but it's brought down well by the Portugal players in the midfield and they go back to the defence Bino in the technical area he'll be happy with that response Portugal showing a reminder that they're still able to carve open Germany from time to time Germany on the whole probably the happier of the two teams as we come towards 25 minutes played in Zwickau. There's one to chase, but 
It's too long. Pinto will pick it up. Groans from the sidelines there. Portugal seem to have the ball with no pressure at all there. Aslani, as he does so again, just chased forward for it, hoping to pick something up and nearly got lucky. But Portugal get it away and they're over into Germany territory, over on the left-hand side with Rodrigo Gomez. Goes one way, then the other, but can't keep possession. Germany keep it in. They might wish that they hadn't, though, as it comes back. Dario Esugo, one of several players who play for Sporting Club in Portugal. Now the space on the right-hand side to deliver a cross in, and it should have done a bit better there. Lawrence has to stoop to head that away. He's got to sort something out as well, Lawrence. He's holding his right leg as he's gone down. Looks like a hip issue for the Magdeburg player. The physio might come on here. Hannes Wolf instructs substitutes to get ready as well. Here's another look at the cross in. It wasn't in that moment you'd imagine that Jamie Lawrence had the problem. Might have been something that's just been niggling away for a little while now, but only 26 minutes into the game. It's still Germany under 20s nil, Portugal under 20s nil. Paul Nebel perhaps has come closer than anybody with the direct free kick that Thiago Pinto did ever so well to fish out of the top corner. Gustavo Mendonça, the Portugal number 18, has put one over the top from a good position. As it is, though, neither goalkeeper beaten. Bit of a stoppage here while Jamie Lawrence gets attended to. 41-year-old coach Hannes Wolf deciding what he should do next. He's managed the under-18s, he's managed the under-19s for Germany as well. Former Dortmund youth coach in their junior setup too. He's got a lot of experience for a man just 41 years of age. That's a young age for a coach, really. It's been a good year for him. Germany having won three and drawn one of their four games in the Elite League. But now Portugal take the corner. It's flipped on at the near post and it'll be another corner from that same right-hand side. Jamil Siebert, the Victoria Cologne player, able to read the near post flick on from Rodrigo Gomes. He gets it out for a second successive Portugal corner. Will they try something different from this one? It's just about the same. The outcome is that Germany get it away. Portugal facing back towards their own goal. Can't keep it in. Germany throw in deep inside their own half. Bit of a midfield battle there. Germany still in possession over on the left-hand side, but they've given it away as soon as I say that. It's a cheap pass forward, just nowhere near a white shirt. Germany can't keep it in as they switch from left to right. And now Portugal have it on their left. Montoya. Pedro Santos knocks it out to the right. Portugal have looked down that right-hand side more often today. Their best chance came from the left, but the most frequent chances have come from the right, where room to cross has been found on several occasions. That'll be one of Hannes Wolf's talking points and his notes at half-time, you'd imagine, but still, a quarter of an hour to go until we can think about the break. Goalless at the moment. Anybody's game as it stands, though. Marco Jean over to do the defending, but Portugal come again. Did that go out of play? Linesman says no, referee says no, and Germany carry on, and they've won it back on the right-hand side, and they might be able to break forward. Aslani 
had too much to do up against two Portugal players. The away side are back in possession. They've settled somewhat. Gone up a gear a little bit in the last five to ten minutes. They've looked as comfortable on the ball now as Germany had in the opening 20. Long ball down the right-hand side, and they'll pick it up, and that's a lovely first touch as well. The control worked out brilliantly for Portugal. Needed the defender to be well-placed to get it away. Portugal still come into the middle with another cross from the right-hand side, but it's cleared away. Germany facing against their own goal, but managed to hook the ball out of the penalty area, and Portugal have it back, but only in the centre circle. They go across to Guilherme Montoya. Germany have pushed Portugal all the way back here from a good position. Free kick given against Marvin Obutz. Holstein Kiel player just pushing in a little bit too hard. Jose Müller, Benfica player on the ball. Germany win it back. Wagner rode one challenge, but he's not happy with the next one. Referee comes over and it's immediately a booking. The yellow card was out of the pocket straight away for Renato Vega. Sporting player wants to shake hands in the end and does get slightly reticent shake of the hand from Robert Wagner. Freiburg player Took a real clattering there with the body of Renato Vega. Put his foot in first to go for the ball. And then just followed through with his body weight against Robert Wagner. He'll be a little bit shaken, Wagner, here, but he's OK to carry on. We're into the last 15 minutes now of the first 45 here in Spickau. Still Germany under 20s nil, Portugal under 20s nil, but the chances are starting to come for both teams. There's definitely potential for goals in this game still. It's not one of those where you think, surely we'll go in goalless at the break and they'll look to regroup. Both teams will fancy their chances of getting one on the scoreboard before the break. That could change the team talk significantly, of course, as Nahuel Noll gets it away for Germany, gets it restarted from inside the deep. Germany lift it down the left-hand side towards Aslani. Brings it down and looks back towards his own halfway line, but Portugal have it now. I thought there might have been a quick break on, but they've gone back instead. It's over on the left hand, down in the corner on that left-hand side. Jamie Lawrence working away at it. Does his job effectively as well because he's earned a goal kick for Germany. Portugal were looking to get at least the corner over there on the left. It's all the way back through to Diogo Pinto. One of five players from Sporting Club in this starting lineup tonight for Bino. Whistle's gone there offside against Portugal. The game's just settling down a little bit now. As I talked about, both teams having the potential to go for goal. It has been a few minutes since either team has really looked like getting in and bearing down on the opposition goalkeeper passes 
just going astray a little bit. Germany rode their luck there in the midfield, but they've come away with it on the right with Jorn. Jorn gets the one-two and goes for the overlap on the right-hand side as well. I'm not sure if he meant it, but Marvin Orbutz might be able to keep that, and he does indeed keep it in. Flicks it in towards the edge of the penalty area. He'll get it back here, Marvin Orbutz. He's got to step inside as Wagner was straying offside. That's going to run out of play. Hannes Wolf able to get it flicked up and back into the hands of his players. Another free kick given. Germany's way. That was Wagner once again just getting his body in the way, earning the free kick. But Germany can't do anything with it for now. Ten minutes left in the first half. Still goalless here in Zwickau. Germany coming in off the back of a 2-1 win against Norway and a 2-2 draw against the Czech Republic. Poland beat Portugal under 20s 3-1 in their last Elite League game. They lost 2-1 to Italy as well in their recent Elite League fixtures. But Portugal had a friendly the other day on the 19th of November when Germany were coming from behind to beat Norway by two goals to one. Portugal were playing out a 1-1 draw with Belgium's under-20 side. It's Matheus Fernandes on the score sheet that day. Germany passing it around, almost like a training exercise there with a couple of volleys in a row. But here come Portugal. Out towards the edge of the area, shooting chance from the edge of the box. It needed a good block. Might have been heading in at the far post. Noll didn't need to dive in the end because the block came early enough. So we don't know whether the young Hoffenheim keeper would have gotten across to it. But the block was well worth making. Portugal exploring their options going forward. Now back at the other end, Portugal with Gilberto Batista, only 18 years of age. Batista came up with one excellent intervention in his own penalty area earlier on tonight. That's a flick forward and Germany keep possession as well. And that's a good ball back into the middle. Shooting chance, it's over the top. Too high, too wide. Ben Bobsey in again, the Mainz man. He was perhaps the unexpected option, not for the first time this evening. But Germany turned on the style a little bit there with a couple of quick passes down the middle. Aslani had an option out to the left. I think he thought the defence might have seen that option as the most likely one. Instead, he went to his right. And Bobsey and again was running in for it. Couldn't keep his shot down. Throw in for Marco Jorn, who's been busy today over on the right-hand side for Germany. Not been a bad performance from Hannes Wolf's team. As with everybody, really, or at least almost everybody in this under-20 elite league. It's just a case of two fairly evenly matched teams. If you can get your game plan to work, any of the teams know that they can beat anybody else in this competition. Good cut back in the box. Portugal with excellent work over on the right-hand side. Not for the first time today. Referee getting in the way of that one. It's taken a deflection. And it's off the stanchion. Nahuel Noll so nearly caught out. And wrong-footed by that. The referee didn't help in the build-up for Portugal. They had to avoid him. High fives all around, but that was so close to being the opening goal. Just kicked off. Took a big deflection on its way through. It was a nice run and it was a nice shot. Portugal a little bit unlucky to see that one just bounce wide. It would have been harsh on Germany, in fairness, had the deflection taken it past Nahuel Noll. But Portugal have earned this corner on their right-hand side. Options for a right-footed corner and a left-footed one. It will be the left foot. And now the right-footed option on the second attempt and it's headed away by Fisnik Aslani the striker doing his defensive duties deep into his own penalty area but Portugal putting up some very stern resistance now in this second half in this first half rather five minutes to go until half time 
Still a long way to go. The whole of the second half, of course, still to be played. Nil-nil at the moment. All sorts of time left in Spickout for somebody to find some goals here tonight. Batista goes forward towards Esugo. Esugo picks up a few yards and moves forward nicely. Portugal overlap on the left. Chance to cross it in. It's a heavy cross. And the header stays with Portugal, actually. It looked as though it was going to end the danger, but Portugal pick it up again on the right-hand side. And again, it's a high and long cross. Difficult one for anybody to attack, but Portugal have it over on the opposite side. Referee's happy with the shoulder barge, and Germany come away with it. Can they launch a counter now? Is there a long ball to be played? Shouts of man on. But Montoya did win it back for Portugal. And here comes Gomez, down towards the byline again. Gomez likes to do that. He's perhaps forced into it today, over on the left flank for Portugal. Every time there's an opportunity to cross it, he sees a white shirt in the way. Has to go a step further, has to take it closer to the byline. Germany narrowing his angle to make the cross. That time, though, he picks up another corner for Portugal, who is spending a lot of time down at this end of the playing field right now. Smart ball back. Montoya lifts it in. Edge of the six-yard box. The header is up, but not away. Germany win the next one and the knockdown as well. Now there's a chance for them to break. Only two Germany players forward. Nobody really bursting into opposition territory. Paul Nebel's forwards. Now Germany play it patiently and allow a few more white shirts to get into Portugal's territory. But it's all the way back. Offside flag stays down on the left-hand side. Germany running into the penalty area. It's a slaloming run. They're looking for a penalty as well, but they won't get one. Referee was unmoved. Germany throw right on the halfway line. Now it's Germany's turn to try and relieve a little bit of the pressure that Portugal have been building up over the past six or seven minutes. Only three minutes left of normal time in this first half. Still goalless between Germany and Portugal. The two under-20 sides going head-to-head -head in a very even contest so far. It's not been without its moments. Diogo Pinto with a couple of good saves in the Portugal goal. One really good defensive tackle from Gilberto Batista as well, who perfectly timed his slide tackle against Ben Bobgian. Now here come Portugal on the right again, and once more, there's time and space to cross. That time, it's well defended by Jamie Lawrence, who had to stretch for it, but lifted the ball away. Montoya forced back over the halfway line towards his captain, Renato Vega, the only man to be in the book in this first half. A very heavy challenge from him on Robert Wagner. Now Dario Esugo might run into trouble here with two Germany shirts around him. No such problems in the end. Portugal free kick. Jose Muller, Benfica player. Thumbs up for the quick early attempt down the left-hand side, but as has been the story of this first half for both teams, really, the ideas, the effort and the application has been there. Just hasn't quite paid off yet. Nothing really clicking in the final third. When the teams have managed some cohesive passing in those final thirds, they have managed shots on goal. But more often than not, it's been corners and it's been set pieces. And nobody's been able to win anything from them. No lucky balls, no knockdowns in the box for the attacking sides. All of that has fallen the way of the defenders today. Can Portugal change that in the last minute of the 45 here? Guilherme Montoya's over there. Jose Muller as well. It'll be Muller to take it by the looks of it. He's got 
Montoya has the short option but goes long instead but back down the left flank crossing opportunity it's taken a deflection and it'll stop it going into the penalty area Germany could break here with a good ball down the right hand side it drifts over stays in for now knocked out of play in the end Bob Gien couldn't keep it in Portugal going back towards their own keeper and with exactly 45 minutes played the referee brings to an end the first half here in Svikau no goals yet but a very very good free kick that flew towards the top corner from Paul Nebel the Germany captain that was as close as they came one shot was blazed over the top from a good position for Portugal that's as close as they got to opening the scoring but at half time in Svikau it's Germany's under 20s nil Portugal's under 20s nil in the elite league stick with us during the halftime break for highlights from that first 45 and of course stick around for the second half coming up very shortly as well in this under 20 elite league action two big names going head to head tonight at the moment goalless at the break nothing separating the two sides before the second half
Tudo, não tem isso, vamos falar. Não vamos dizer nada, não vamos dizer nada. 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 Das war sehr ekel, das ist dann nicht von der Vorschein, die schon rund wieder sein, war aber, wir haben trotzdem hier ein bisschen wetten, dass wir dabei, nämlich die Auskunft von dem Viertelfinale des Weltkrieger Sachsen-Pokals 22, 23, wir haben natürlich nochmal alle Vorstellungen, die hier mit dabei sind, Dennis Brotzel, hier ganz links, die sind jetzt schon 20 und mit dabei, und Günther, der Pokalleiter, ist mit dabei, naja, Paul, der kenne ich jetzt nicht so richtig, wenn er drunter ist, aber auch die Fassade ist schön, und natürlich haben wir auch noch Volker Bayer mit dabei, mit dem Spiel Spielbetrieb. Und äh, ich möchte natürlich noch eine gute Stunde, ne? Ja, das ist gut. Wir das immer persönlich. Was macht denn die Attraktivität dieses Sachsen-Pokals aus? Ich meine, der ist teuer, hat diesen Wettbewerb noch nicht gewinnen können. Also, das ist schon besonders drin, glaube ich. Ja, das ist nicht besonders, weil er
von Wehrgesetz. Und es ist tatsächlich dieses Pistolet Wirkenau. Wenn es uns gut darum geht, ist es in der Dresden oder so, dass es nochmal zu klären wäre, auf jeden Fall eine Halle gibt, aber weil es so gut wiederkommt, dann geht es genau in Dresden zu Hause gegen den Christoph Stücker. Das Tor der Freude wieder mal an die Seite ist er dann auch wieder mehr. Das ist eigentlich gut. Das ist halb hoch gefallen, 0-0. Das ist von Lipsia Olfelsdorf als nächstes, das Team aus der Landesstraße. Wir werden den Heimspiel haben, da aber nach unten geht es dann eben nicht mehr. Das ist das Liga-System in Dresden und sie treffen auf den FC Oberlau bis Neu Gersdorf. Das sind also die vier Partien, wir wollen uns hier nochmal genau benennen. Wir waren nur mit Frauen und mit Umdrehen. Und wir legen uns die zwei in den Halbzeitpause. Da sind wir also wieder der Sieger der Partie Großenheim gegen Prima. Geht auf den ersten FC Lokomotive Leipzig. Die zweite Partie der Kirmes FC gegen FC Erste Bürger Aue. Also vor dem Winter geht es fast gar nicht mehr. Ja doch, mit der dritten Partie. Die SG Genau Dresden gegen den FSV Zwickau. Das Duell der Freunde also wieder mal im Schattenpokal. Und als letzte Partie aber noch die Partie des SV Lipsia. 80, 193 Minuten in der Vorstellung Olbitz gegen die FC Oberlau des Neugerstorf. Und der ist doch alle auch so ein bisschen im Losschluss. Ja, der Ball, ich gehe noch mal zu dir. Wie setzt du das ein? Eine gute Partie mit der Ball. Also das ist jetzt, das ist wahnsinnig interessant. Und wir schauen, dass wir uns alle machen, 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 ja, also der März ist schon mal positiv vorprogrammiert, das kann man schon mal sagen. Also man kann sich auch freuen auf diese Rückrunde, ja, der Ball ist immer noch ein bisschen stehen, auch ein bisschen gesiegelt. Ja, aber wir den Haken dran, dass also die vier Partien des Läufers der Sachsen-Pokals haben Sie hier oben nochmal auf der Tafel, aber man muss das für die Brille ganz gut scharfstellen. Genau jetzt kann man es nochmal sehen. Danke Martin. Also wir sind uns voll auf das Viertelfinale. Wir sind wieder nach dem Pokal. Dann geht es zu den Episcopal-Fußball nach Dresden. Gleich geht es hier weiter. Wir sind in der Früh zwischen Deutschland und Polen.
Welcome back to Zwickau for this under-20 Elite League game between Germany and Portugal. Nil-nil at the break. We're about to get started for the second half. Jamie Lawrence substituted out by the looks of it. He did pull up with an injury near the end of the first 45 minutes. Lawrence, the Magdeburg man, replaced. Just the one change at the interval for Hannes Wolf by the looks of it, and Germany will get things started in just a moment. Very chilly indeed in Zwickau. The players don't want to be standing around there too long before the action restarts, but they won't have to wait too long either. So there we go, the referee's whistle gets things restarted in Zwickau. Germany nil, Portugal nil. Will there be goals in this second period? Will Germany be able to finish off for 2022 on a victorious note? It would be a lovely way to sign off for this year, for the year group. It's their last game, the class of 2002-03. It's Sadiq Fofana. The Nuremberg player who's just come on at the break. I'm sure we'll see several more substitutions during the course of this next 45 minutes. Hopefully that won't impact from the flow of the game. In the first 45, it was not exactly end-to-end -end stuff, but there were chances at both ends at least. Both teams on top for just about 15 or 20 minutes of the first half. And here's a good chance for Portugal. They've only got two players going forward. Make that three or four now. They might shoot directly, and they do. And it's just past the far post with the low effort. It was a daisy cutter with the left foot. There were other options available there for Portugal. Germany gave that one away rather simply. And just over 60 seconds into the second half, that was a real chance for Portugal to take the lead. Manahuel Noll. Dived across to his left. Fortunately for Germany, the shot was all the way wide past the far post. It was Pedro Santos, the Benfica player, who went for goal himself. He picked it up from the misplaced pass across the middle. Had options left and right. Dragged it himself with the left foot. Now Germany chasing down the goalkeeper. Six or seven yards out from goal. Portugal have it back again. And that's a lovely pass threaded through to the right-hand side. Portugal over, down by the edge of the penalty area. It's cut back across. Pedro Santos is blocked, and it'll be a Portugal corner. Good start to the second half for Bino's team. Portugal still yet to get a win on the board in the Elite League itself. They drew three days ago against Belgium under-20s. Germany, for their part, came from behind to beat Norway 2-1. On the 19th of November, it was Fisnik Aslani with both of the goals on that day. Pal Nebel and Nick Voltemada getting on the score sheet in the previous fixture. But here come Portugal with a cross from the right. It's headed back across the middle. Could have been dangerous, but it was straight into the arms of Nahuel Noll. There was a real chance there on the far side of the six-yard box to steer that header back across into a more dangerous position in the Germany penalty area. Instead, Noll would have been quite... Relieved to see that one go straight into his gloves. Portugal made it easy for the Hoffenheim keeper to grab it. But nonetheless, they've confirmed that good start. Just three minutes since the restart. It's been all Portugal in the second period. Still very, very early days yet. That flick won't quite work out for Gustavo Mendonça. The man from Canelas, can't keep hold of the ball. Germany have it in the right back position. Comes across to the new man for Fana. Full stretch there from Chalhanolu. He couldn't keep it in play.
It's lifted towards the left-hand side for Germany, but Portugal win it back, not for the first time since the break. For Fana, calm in possession, but forced all the way back down towards the corner and does well to win the throw-in for Germany. Portugal just upping the ante now. Pushing forward, committing men forward. They don't want to finish 2022 with no victories in the Elite League. And there's a nice pass into the right-hand side of the penalty area. The cutback's not a bad one either. Germany come away with it, but it's a poor clearance. Portugal will have another chance to get one into the box. Instead, they go across to the left-hand side. Captain Veiga launches it long towards the right-hand side this time. Portugal switching the ball at will. It's volleyed across the area, but nobody's anywhere near that. It was something between a cross and a shot, really. The ball took a nice flat trajectory across the middle of the box. It could have been dangerous, but nobody had gambled on it. And it was never going to trouble the back post of Noll's goal. Germany just struggling to find their rhythm in the opening five minutes here. That one's gone straight out of play for a throw-in. Diogo Travassos gets it restarted. And Renato Veiga who is in the book. Takes it out to the left for Portugal, and they still have it on the left. This is a nice run. Will they get into the area? They won't, but they'll pick up a free kick on the edge of the box. Decent movement. Portugal already arguing over who's going to take it. Guilherme Montoya wants it. It was Jose Muller who went down. Good run forward. Plenty of initiative taken by the men in red and green so far. Coach Bino must be pretty happy. Although he's not happy with the fourth officials. Happy with the performance, perhaps. Happy with the officials and his opposition, maybe a little less so, but nonetheless, Germany's best chance or the closest that Germany came so far was from a free kick from a similar position. The angle was tighter in the first half. This is arguably a more promising one. What can Portugal do with the dead ball? Will they go direct? They will, but it's way over the top. It was lifted high over the wall. Never, ever looked like dipping back down and troubling Nahuel Noll. Portugal free kick over on the right-hand side this time. Germany with almost no possession in the seven minutes since they kicked off. Nahue Noll, a 19-year-old born in Munich, has been the busiest of the Germany players in the second half. He's the one with the gloves. Portugal have it with Esugo back in their own half. Now they launch it down the right-hand side. Sadiq Fofana has his clearance blocked and Germany need to win the second ball and they do so. It's cleared away by Jamil Siebert. Yes, you go. Goes back towards the centre spot. It's not quite going to run out of play. Would have been a bit of a freebie for Germany had they picked up a throw in there. Paul Nebel tries to win the ball back, but unsuccessfully. And so the pattern of the second half continues for a little longer at least. It's all Portugal at the moment. It's just about turning their possession into chances. Still yet to really test Noll, the goalkeeper. But it does nothing for the confidence of the Germany players. The fact that they can't really get on the ball at the moment. And if they do get it, they can't keep it. Portugal will look long off the boot of Captain Vega. It's going to be kept in by the number 13, Gravassos. He goes back. It's knocked in with the left foot into the penalty area. Could be a shooting chance from the right-hand side of the box. Cavallo, the man from Vitoria, said to Baal just dispossessed at the last moment. 
Could have pulled the trigger from the right-hand side there. Instead, a decent bit of defending. Portugal corner, though, on their right-hand side. More defence called upon for Germany. That's launched into the box, and it's a good ball. The header's flicked on up and over from Gilberto Batista. Couldn't turn it goalwards, could only skim it off the top of his head. The 18-year-old from Sporting Club puts it straight out for a Germany goal kick. Germany now looking for the short goal kick. Unsurprisingly, looking to try and build something. Trying to get a little bit of possession, a little bit of time on the ball, but they've given it away not long after getting it from the goal kick. The flick in the midfield is immediately snapped up by the red shirts of Portugal. And that's been the pattern for the whole of these 10 minutes since the referee blew for the start of the second half. But that's a good challenge. And now there might be something to build on for Germany. Chance to break over on the right-hand side. Two men in the middle. More on the way now as well. An overlap on the right-hand side. It comes into the middle for Paul Nebel. Captain goes backwards. But this is the first time Germany have had any kind of possession in Portugal's half since the break. They look out to the left-hand side. A goal now, or even a big chance, could turn the tide of this game in the second half. Bob Zian steps in, looked thought about the shot but overhit the pass across to the right hand side it was a good option Tim Breithaupt over there but if it was into the stride of Breithaupt it could have been a really dangerous chance Germany have it across the middle and he's out at the back post and into the side netting groans from the Germany dugout and groans from the crowd here in Zwickau as well because Germany from nowhere just had their best chance of the game. Substitutions will be made by the looks of it, and they'll be made very, very soon. Free kick goes the way of Pedro Santos. Looks like we might see Amanda Sieb coming on. Portugal look down the left-hand side. Germany win it back, though. Edge of the box. That's a good run from Wagner. He skips past one. Could be a shooting chance. They go for the overlap on the left. Wagner thought about it, but he had his run blocked off as he moved into the box there. Wagner, the Freiburg player, was happy to receive that return pass, but he just couldn't get it. Ran down a cul-de-sac, and that meant that the ball out to the left of the penalty area was just asking too much of him. Portugal go back towards their goalkeeper. No real pressure at the moment, but much better from Germany in the last two or three minutes. Long ball down the middle is headed away comfortably. Germany have it back and they'll look to go centrally this time. A cushioned volley nearly releasing Germany in the final third, but Portugal have it back with Renato Vega. Diogo Travassos lifts it down the right. Good movement forward, Chalhanolu. He's going to pick up a free kick there. Dario Esugo. Another of the Sporting Club players. Just fooled by the quick touch. Blocked him off. Germany free kick. Triple substitution coming up then for Germany. Will it be 9, 10 and 11? It will. So very attacking change this for Germany. Walter Marder's coming on, centre forward from Elfersberg. Maximilian Bayer, forward from Hanover, making his way onto the field as well. Great Haupt is off, Bobzian is off. He's put in a real shift today. He was so often the runner in the first half, but it didn't quite work out for him. 
Not for a lack of trying, that's for sure. What kind of impact can the new players have? Still not yet at the hour mark. There's a lot of time left to make an impact if they're going to. What odds on one of the young men who's just come on being the winning goal scorer today? Baya, Voltamada, Sieb, all carrying goal threats. It's lifted up. Germany want the free kick. Travassos isn't happy, but he was grabbing Maximilian Bayer there. Germany have it on the centre line. In the middle of the pitch, they'll be looking to move forward now into Portugal territory if they can. They'll start again with Nahue Nol, the goalkeeper. Siebert turns and has to go back. Trouble for Voltamada facing his own goal. Portugal have it back on the edge of the final third, but they've given it away just as quickly as they won it. And now Germany could launch something forward. Bayer turns well. Looks down the left-hand side. It's booted straight up into the stands. Aslani was over there. Bayer as well. Wagner over to the right. Keeper Noll, way outside of his area, calmly passes towards Robert Wagner. The Freiburg man takes it out to the right-hand side. Looks as though Nicholas May has joined in on the left-hand side for Germany in that Quadruple substitution. Here's his, his chance to get something into the box. Instead, he goes to Voltemada. Voltemada dribbling towards the Portugal defence and not able to stick with the ball in the corner of the area. But it'll be a Germany throw in. Again, Germany turning the tide in their favour. A lot more possession now in the Portugal half, that's for sure. Substitution for Portugal. Pedro Santos going off. Germany have it on the left. Whistle's gone, though. Wouldn't have counted. Whatever happened there. The whistle was clearly blown. Giorgio Pinto under a bit of pressure but gets it away with the right foot downfield. Germany win the header. They win the knockdown as well. This is more like it. Chance for a cross perhaps. Hannes Wolf's team working their way back into this game very well. Bayer unlucky not to pick up a corner for that. Portugal goal kick instead. 63 minutes gone. Germany nil, Portugal nil. Germany looking to make it four wins from five. Portugal looking for their first points in this season's Elite League. Both teams looking to sign off for 2022 with the last under-20 game for this year group. At the moment, still no goals in Zwickau. Header won by Portugal and they'll have to chase that back. All the way back to the keeper. It's well played. Null. Putting his hand up in acknowledgement, but he took the safe option and got it straight out of play. But Portugal come back with it. Wagner does well, but trouble in the defence at the moment for Fana under all kinds of pressure. Portugal have it down by the byline. Important tackle on the edge of the six-yard box there. It just meant that the ball ricocheted across the goal too quickly for Portugal to do anything about it. That might have been more dangerous than it looked in the end. 
Sadiq Fafana, the Nuremberg player, in all sorts of trouble in the back line for Germany. And that's a good step over. Portugal will have a free kick there. And I won't be surprised if Robert Wagner goes into the book there as well. There's another look at Fafana just being swamped by players. The challenge from Siebert just forcing the ball to bounce all the way across the goal. What a position they found themselves in there, though. The cutback was really available. It was an open option for them, but they couldn't use it. Bayer won it for a second, but now suddenly he's got defence to think about instead, and it's lifted up and over the top of his own goal by the Germany defence. Good effort in the end from Siebert. The Victoria Köln player was in a difficult position there. Managed to turn it over the top with no danger of an own goal. I suppose you'd say there's plenty of danger of an own goal, but he dealt with it calmly. And averted that danger for now. Portugal corner from the left, 65 minutes gone. Goalless as it stands. It's been a back and forth game again, but Portugal starting to go through another good phase of this game. Can there be a shot from the edge of the box? A little bit of Ballglück, as they would say in German there. Portugal didn't really know what they were doing with it, but it fell their way. Neither of them could make up their mind as to who wanted to take it. And in the end, neither of them got the chance to do so. Got in each other's way, but here they come again. It's chipped over from the left. Good strength to win that ball back on the right-hand corner of the penalty area. And they go back down the right flank now, Portugal. That's a lovely step over from the substitute. Might have a crack there, straight into the chest. Oh, Sadiq Fofana. Germany can bring it away. Aslani starts the move with the pass back. Aslani picks it up again, and again he drops the ball back just by a couple of yards. Pass forward out to the left-hand side, though. Not accurate enough. It was somewhere between Nick Voltemada and Maximilian Bayer, but neither of them could get to it. Chance down the middle for Germany now. That's a good step over. The cutback's a good one. The pass on wasn't a good one, though. What a chance that was. Aslani suddenly on the ball in the penalty area for Germany. He just stepped over it with his left and then cut in on the right. Open space for himself to shoot. with the pass off towards Paul Nebel. In all honesty, wasn't the best one. Perhaps the young Hoffenheim striker needed to show a little bit more selfishness in front of goal there. duped the Portugal defenders they did well to cut it down his time didn't have time to pick a spot but chose the wrong option really in the end now Germany coming forward again chance to get something into the box easily headed away launched over the shoulder but again straight towards the Portugal defender the header on will only find Sadiq Fofana though Fofana goes across to Siebert that's a good pass out to the right-hand side. Crisp. Easy to control. It's allowed Germany to use a little bit of room here. And they spread it across to Bayer on the left. His ball down towards the byline. It's just picked up by the goalkeeper. At the back corner of his six-yard box. Better this from Germany, though. And again, much like the first half, it's still goalless. The huge chances have yet to materialise, but you still feel like either side could open the scoring here. And I'm sure the fans here in Zwickau will be desperate to see Hannes Wolf's team give them something to cheer. They need something to warm them up. A very cold night indeed here in Zwickau. Pitch, though, in brilliant condition, considering these November temperatures. Germany win that long ball battle, but they've given it away. Bayer with the loose ball and Portugal have all kinds of space on the right hand side chance to deliver something into the middle this runner's in there it's cut back arms up in the middle it's gone towards the back post it's volleyed back across and this is a big chance for Portugal the header isn't a great one though it was just a little bit too high still a shooting chance and it's across the face of goal from the number six Dario Esfigo the man from Sporting Club could not steer that on target just snatched at the effort really dragged it across the face of goal it was a little lucky for Germany that there was no Portugal teammate there 
running in because it would have been a tap-in from inside the six-yard box. What's Noll going to do with this one? Goes out to the right-hand side where Siebert is waiting for him. Noll gets it back and Germany are confident enough to pass it around inside their own penalty area. Another change being lined up for Portugal at the moment. Good pass out to the right by Nebel. Germany with an overlap and they use it. Chance to get something into the box. It's not a great cross though. Just scuffed off the bottom of the studs. And Portugal can counter here. Cutback is maybe a little bit too far. It might take the sting out of that attack for Portugal. It's taken a bit of speed out of it, a bit of pace out of it, but they still come again anyway. Renato Vaiga takes his time and gets it back. 70 minutes gone now in Zwickau. Still, Germany under 20, nil. Portugal under 20, nil. There are goals in this for both or either sides. Definitely, both will be believing in their abilities to go on and win this game. Might be decided by a single goal. Here come Portugal. Options both way again. And they're going straight down the middle. Oh, that was very messy from Portugal, but it was messy from the Germany defence as well. Daniel Carvalho, in the end, looked like he'd lost it on a couple of occasions. Just ran into the challenge there, directly against Yamil Siebert. And somehow, the ball just came all the way through for him. Went in really hard there, Carvalho. Almost went in two-footed. No wonder the ball came out in his favour. Siebert went to clear it with one foot. Carvalho jumped in with both. Portugal corner. They tried the flick on at the near post. Gomez has gone down in the box there. No real penalty appeal. It's back with Vega. Best chance for a while there. Falling to Portugal. Can they create another one with something from the right-hand side? It's whipped over, but again, as many of the crosses have been today, it's just too long and too high. It doesn't give anybody really a chance to attack it. If you were underneath it to win the header, it would take an awful lot to do anything with it. Changes now for Portugal. Mendonça going off. Montoya off as well. Another change for Germany too. At the same time. So Daniel Carvalho who just missed a really good chance for Portugal. He's off. Germany might just wait a moment before they make the next change. Looks as though it might be Emilio Kera who's coming on. He does now make his way onto the field. I thought he'd be delayed for just a moment, but instead, the man from Cercle Bruges in Belgium is on for Germany. 20 minutes of real time just about remaining now. Portugal with something of a new look squad after those changes. Germany as well having made five changes so far. That's in this second half alone, six in total. Looks like the yellow card's gone against Paul Nebel there. Both captains now with a booking. Here's another look at how it happened. Might have actually been Kira, who's just been on the field for 60 seconds. That was booked. Germany with everybody back then on the edge of the penalty area. Portugal committing men forward. Two substitutes over there getting ready to take this ball in for Portugal. 
Flavio Nagino is one of the players. He leaves it, though. Gets it back on the left-hand side. Was that a handball over there with the slide challenge? Portugal thought it was. Corner to Portugal anyway. Corner kick on the left to Portugal. They take it short. Have they wasted the chance to get something into the box? Not yet. They'll go with a deep cross from all the way back there. And Germany can win the header. And they might have a bit of momentum to break with as well. Kiera brought down. Jose Muller not happy. He'll have to deal with it. Voltimada wants to take this and get on with it for Germany. There's another look at the challenge that sent the ball out for a corner. There's a look at the one that put to an end Germany's counter-attack as Emilio Kera was sent crashing to the turf. And here's Sadiq Fafana, a half-time change. Nicholas May back to the goalkeeper. 15 minutes remaining. Both teams still with a big chance to go on and win this game. Germany trying to win that back deep in Portugal territory, but it's going to go out for a Portugal goal kick. A little unfortunate there, Germany over on the right-hand side. It was a good effort to try and put the defence under pressure and win the ball back quickly. Could easily have ended up with a good chance or at least a corner, but as it is, Portugal have it on the right-hand side. Müller gaining plenty of ground. Müller lays it off to the right. Ball across to the middle is a good one. It's picked up at the back post. Portugal's number 17, who's only just come on, plays it across the middle. Clearance is only half away for now, but Germany have control of it. They'll go back to the goalkeeper. And he launches it away with the right foot, but only as far as a red and green shirt. But that's a lovely move. Germany now with three players bursting forward. The ball out to the right-hand side from right to left. Rather, not quite accurate enough. And now it's Portugal on the right, but that one's going to run out of play. And Müller, the Benfica man, can't quite keep it in. Germany throw. Nick Voltamada. Done really well this season, Voltamada for Elversberg. He's not scored as many as he'd like, but he's an important part of a very well-functioning attack. And Germany get a shot on target. It's gathered easily enough in the end. Armando Sieb letting fly with the left foot. Straight at Giorgio Pinto. Managed to just parry it down. Simple enough in the end, but worth a go. Both teams have created a fair amount today, but turning that into shots on target has actually been the difficult thing. Defence usually where they need to be. Batista goes back. Portugal launch it long, straight down the middle, and there's a half chance as well. Well, head in hands for the Portugal forwards. There was a half chance there. Nearly, nearly bounced all the way through. Not quite in the end. Just a few inches away from being a one-on-one -on -one with a good chance to lift it over the keeper. Appeals for offside, but... Fag stays down, and Germany have it on the right-hand side. They can't run through there, though. Kiera tried it, but Germany do have it back in a good position. It's passed straight into the penalty area. Shooting chance, and it's parried away by Pinto. That's the best save he's made in a long time. Gets over to his left to push that one behind for a Germany corner. It was a direct transition that worked well that time. As soon as Germany won that ball back, they were looking into the box, into the centre straight into a shooting position. The first touch was good, the turn was good, the shot wasn't bad either, but the keeper came up with the save. Big chance for Germany with 12 minutes remaining. They've still got a corner though. Five players around the penalty spot. Who's going to be in there? It's hacked away. Now there's a break on for Portugal. Siebert was all the way forward, trying to get underneath that corner kick. Will he be caught out of position? He won't. And you can see him tracking back all the way from the Portugal penalty area back to his own. 
Not bad. After 79 minutes of football. Portugal spread it to the right once again. Travassos. He's not got forward too many times in this second half. Travassos goes across the edge of the box. Slide challenge gets it away. The other one doesn't win the ball, though. Referee tells Dario Estugo to get back to his feet. And Germany now can break away with Maximilian Bayer. Good first touch. Just delayed a little bit. Can't quite knock it out to the left. He still has it, though, Bayer. He's got runners in the middle. What will he do with it? No easy options for Bayer. He might go himself now into the central position. Shoots. And it's on target. Where's the rebound falling? Voltamado was there, but it didn't come his way. Suddenly, Germany springing to life now as an attacking force in the game. Bayer was so patient there. Looked to spread it to the right a couple of times, but instead just kept it and kept it. Defence kept backing off. The space kept opening up, and it was worth a go. Giorgio Pinto then in a short space of time with a couple of good saves. Both ones that you'd fancy him to make, but he did indeed get the job done. And got the ball away to safety as well. Portugal getting a little bit fortunate there with the throw-in going their way. It's back parallel to the edge of their penalty area. Germany have it back in the Portugal half. Heavy touch, though. That's really well won back. Now there's a break on for Portugal. There's power and pace in this break. Esugo overhits the pass. That brought the attack to a screeching halt for Portugal. There was certainly more in that. Tells the story for both teams, really. The execution hasn't quite been there. That changed somewhat in recent minutes for Germany, who've managed to get a couple of shots on target from half-decent positions. Would have taken a rebound or something with a little bit of luck to open the scoring. Now Voltamada battles for that really well. Voltamada still going, goes into the middle. Big shooting chance for Germany, and it's straight at the goalkeeper, and the rebound's over the top two. That was the best chance for this Germany under-20 team in the game. 82 minutes gone. Voltamada's dribbling in the box. Rode a couple of challenges. Got into the left-hand side of the penalty area. Stayed on the ball and just flicked it across to Maximilian Bayer. And the Hanover striker only found the gloves of Giorgio Pinto. Give him that chance again. And you'd like to think that he'd bury it. Aimed for the left-hand side of the goal as he saw it. Didn't get it right. Portugal on the break now. End-to-end -end stuff this. Good defence from the Germany captain. Comes across and puts it out for a throw-in. Paul Nabel still a busy man in the middle for Germany. As it stands... Germany would still be sitting atop the Elite League table, but it would give Italy a chance. For now, though, Germany's still thinking about going for the win. That's what they want to do to end 2022 in style. Nicholas Mai holds the ball for now. Another big change for Portugal coach Bino. Rodrigo Gomez withdrawn. Dario Esugo, who had a good chance to break forward a moment ago, he's withdrawn as well. Plenty of changes now in the Portugal lineup. Germany have it with May. Sieb waiting for it, Bayer waiting for it. The run comes from Paul Nebel though. Germany gain a couple of yards and they've got another throw in. What can they do from this? That's going to be a Portugal throw. Will Portugal get their first point of the Elite League? They look good value for it at the moment. 
Well, they get their first win, in fact. The referee orders the throw-in to be retaken right in front of the Germany dugout. Joao Tomé from Benfica, one of the players who's just come on. But here come Portugal over on the left-hand side. They've got players in the middle. They've got a big chance to do something with this. The shot comes in. It's just over the top. Nahue Noll got his hand up, let it go, but he didn't get off the ground. If that had dipped under the bar, could have been a really big chance. The cutback from the substitute was a good one. Over onto his right foot. Fired it. Swerving, but just over the top. Crucially for Portugal, over the top. Voltamada runs out of space. Portugal attack down the right-hand side this time. Five minutes of normal time left. Joel Tomé on the overlap. They don't need to use him because they've got a chance to score, and they do so. It's curled into the bottom corner, and Portugal lead with 85 minutes gone. They've come out of the blocks in the second half really, really well. And although Germany looked to have re-established the upper hand at times, Portugal have just never gone away in this second half. The overlap gave them the option to drag the Germany defenders away and it left space on the right-hand side and they ruthlessly exploited it. Portugal leading by one goal to nil. Big moments for Bino's Portugal under 20 side. It looks like they're in pole position to take the win here now. Not long left. Germany still certainly alive in this contest. There have been good, good chances for Germany in this second half, but now Portugal have taken that one. They'll need to be very quick indeed if they're to get back into the game. Over on the right-hand side for Germany, but it's a Portugal throw-in. Germany fighting for it over on the right-hand side, but again, it's a Portugal throw. Suddenly, Portugal will feel very comfortable now. Germany need to turn this around and get back on top. They've tested Diogo Pinto a couple of times recently they're going to have to do it again and they'll have to do better than that if they're to take a point from this game would be a bitter way to finish 2022 for Hannes Wolf's team it's been such a good year corner ball for Portugal this is not where Germany need it right now A substitution or two to be made. Nebel, the captain, is one of them to be withdrawn. Portugal corner, though. As much as Germany would like to think about attack and getting back into the game. For now, they've got defending to do. The referee's whistle puts an end to the counter-attack as well. Germany not happy with that. The yellow card's out as well. Might have been from the reaction from Sadiq Fafana in defence. Quickly taken free kick. Out to the right-hand side. Portugal coming again from a dangerous position. That's good footwork. They're still going in the box here, Portugal. Step over is nice. Just a little dummy. But Germany deal with it and they get it away. And that's really good footwork. Chance to break down the left-hand side. There's a cynical tug back on Armando C. But he's gone out to the left-hand side to buy it. Chance for a pass into the middle and it's blocked. 
It's going to be a corner ball to Germany, but nothing more. There was more in that as well, given that we're into the 90th minute. Maximilian Bayer might have done better from his ball across from the left. It was a very promising break, and it was Amanda Sieb who did all of it. Captain Paul Nebel watching on after being withdrawn. Really just hoping that his teammates would find a leveller. Corner ball is in and it's headed over from close range. Germany just not able to get anything on target. It was a really good chance. throw-in's gone Germany's way but we're into 90 minutes only two added on There's not long left to play still all the way back as far as Germany are concerned in the wrong half Free kicks gone Portugal's way. Well, there's only 60 seconds left. If Hannes Wolf's team are to rescue something from this game. Portugal have been good. They've had chances. They'll feel good value for the win, but in fairness, Germany could have scored themselves. There's another shot that just creeps wide, but it took a nick on the way through. Wagner was the man who got the deflection and that means it's a Portugal corner and that means the visitors can keep the ball all the way down in the corner judging by those high fives it might mean that they think they've done enough to win this now it's not like we've seen in the World Cup with 10-15 minutes added on we've only got two here and we've almost played them Portugal unsurprisingly keep it in the corner Germany need it back quickly and they will have it back here it's a bit careless from Portugal Germany might just have one last chance. Sieb. Out of play. Germany throw in. Last chance saloon now. Straight into the box. It's chested down well by Voltemada. They'll have a corner if the referee will give them long enough to take it. And that's a big if right now. He's got his whistle to his lips. This might well be the last throw of the dice. Ten seconds over the two minutes added. Portugal with one last chance to grab a leveller and finish 2022 on a positive note. Keepers up, everybody's up, it's into the box. Is there a shot coming in from the right? There is, but it's blocked. Keepers all the way there, that's going to just dribble out of play. And the referee signals an end to the game. Celebrations from Giogo Pinto, the Portugal goalkeeper. A couple of good saves from him have kept his team in the contest today at 0-0. And then Portugal went and found a late winner themselves, just as when Germany were on top and looking good to go and take the win themselves, Portugal did it instead. It was their first really good break in a while in a game where both teams had chances to get on the score sheet earlier on in the second half in particular. Germany were shut out by Diogo Pinto, the Portugal keeper who had a good day, made a couple of big stops. Sieb with a good run, Voltamada and Bayer went close. But in the end, nobody could find a way past Diogo Pinto. And unfortunately for Germany, Nahue Noll was beaten just once after 85 minutes. And that is why the visitors go away from this game as the winners in this under-20 elite league clash in Zwickau. It's finished, Germany nil, Portugal won. A disappointing finish for Hannes Wolf's team in 2022. Nonetheless, it can't put a real dampener on what has been a good year for the Germany under-20 team. This year group finish off as the class of 2002-2003 at under-20 level on a 
bit of a sour note given that they've conceded in the 85th minute here that they'll go again against England and Italy in March 2023. Thanks for joining us for today's game. It's finished in Svikau. Germany under 20s, nil. Portugal under 20s, one.